Hi. So today, before we get too much into inferential statistics, we're going to talk about um, selecting the pro appropriate tests to do on a set of data to answer your research question. We're also going to look a little bit at the different kinds of variables. Um, I believe we talked about that a little bit last week. We're going to go over it again this time because it's really important for choosing the appropriate test. So. So the, um, there are three different types of uh, variables. The first one is nominal variables. Um, nominal sounds kind of like nom name. Um, this is where the number in question is just a name. It doesn't mean anything. You might say men are two and women are one in our data set um, and code them that way as we enter our data. There's nothing, nothing about that number that we've chosen that means anything. It could be men are five and women are eight. It doesn't matter. So in this case, the number is just a name. It's just a placeholder. It's just a way of marking. The next type is an ordinal uh, data. Ordinal means that there is something about the order here that matters, um, like first place or second place in a race. But just like first place or second place in a race, there could be a different amount of time in between them, right? So there may be two seconds between the first place and second place winners of a swimming race, and then 10 seconds between the second place and the third place uh, in that same race. So there's an order, but the distance between those two numbers is not finite. The last one here is interval or ratio scale, scale data. And this is when we're talking about a quantity using an interval that's specific and consistent. So um, this is like points on a ruler. Um, the difference between interval or ratio would be that for ratio, it's, there's a zero. For interval, there may not be. Um, but essentially, most of the more complex statistics require you to have interval or ratio data. So here's a lovely uh, table to help you figure out what kind of test you might need. Um, in each of these boxes, the top um, here, um, nominal, uh, tells you what kind of test. And underneath, there is a uh, uh, example. So uh, nominal scale might be male, female, or vegan, yes, no, right? There's not two vegan versus five vegan. No, there's just yes, no. Um, so what you would do for that is a chi-score. So you can look through. Um, we've got the next one we have. Uh, male, female, and looking at comparing a uh, grade point average, which is usually considered interval or ratio. Um, and that would be done with a t-test. If you have more than two groups, low, medium, or high study time, and test score, you, that would require using a one-way ANOVA. And then lastly, if you have two interval or ratios, um, optimism score versus six days that you took last year from work, that would be a Pearson's correlation. So the next few slides I'm going to click through really quickly because those are just an example for you to use that on in, on your own. Um, the next thing I want to talk about a little bit is statistical significance. This is the how convinced we are about our decision, about the hypothesis that we made at the beginning of the experiment, given our findings. So. Um, the uh, idea here is if I'm really confident, I can tell you if we were to redo this a bunch of different times in a bunch of different ways, maybe with different participants, it's going to be the same thing. We're going to find the same thing, right? So the, um, when we're talking statistical significance, we're talking about our assuredness, how sure we are that um, our decision to reject or um, uh, retain the null hypothesis um, is correct. We'll talk about in the next video null hypothesis a little bit more, but essentially in um, research, we're either gonna stick with the null that uh, there is no relationship here between these, uh, between these uh, variables, or we're gonna say we have a good case here for suggesting that there is some kind of relationship here. Um, 
And so statistical significance, how sure we are that there is a relationship. Another, some other ideas here for how we're going to, um, the, what kind of data we're gonna use. If you have lots of interdependent variable, of independent variables for a nominal scale, so you have um, both men and women, and within men and women, you're going to look at a Democrat and Republican. So you've got uh, kind of uh, situated uh, categories within each other. That you'd use a factorial design. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the course. Um, there's no real uh, test for looking at ordinal scale data if you have multiple independent variables. Um, ordinal scale data is, um, is difficult. Um, as I believe we talked about last week, um, we often, because it's difficult, treat it like interval or ratio data. It's not entirely okay um, by most statisticians, but it is what often happens. Um, lastly, if we've got multiple independent variables for interval or ratio data, we'll use a multiple regression. Okay, so the next thing to talk about here, effect size. For effect size, this refers to how strong the relationship is. So you may be used to, I've heard this a bazillion times, um, folks talking about statistical significance as if it were effect size. Again, statistical significance is how sure I am that I'm correct in rejecting or retaining the null. Effect size is how strong that relationship between those variables is. An example, um, we have done tons and tons of studies. Um, there's lots of work looking at the uh, statistical significance and difference in vocabulary between adult men and adult women. Um, women are uh, socialized to talk more, we do talk more, um, and there is a statistically significant difference in how much women talk and how much men talk. There is a relationship between the um, quantity of, of vocabulary words men say and quantity of vocabulary words women say, right? There's, so we are pretty sure from lots of different studies that there is a difference there, right? The effect size, on the other hand, how much more of a vocabulary women tend to have than men is teeny. So women talk more, we have a bigger vocabulary than men. Um, that we can say with some surety, right? We can be pretty sure that that's the case. On the other hand, how much more? Not much more, right? So effect size is how strong that relationship is, right? And in my, that example I just said, the, effect size would be strength in terms of number of words, right? Okay, so one way we do this is Pearson's R, um, and it is used to be less common that people would report effect size. Now it's becoming very common, um, and more commonly the way to do it not is not Pearson's R, but Cohen's D. Um, I'll uh, try to put some links so that you can look into that. We're not going to talk about that as much in this class. Um, maybe later if you take a stats class, they'll, they'll talk more about Cohen's D. Okay. So another thing to talk about before we get into inferential statistics a little bit more in the next video um, is to look at how we choose a sample um, or power analysis. So power analysis, we have a rating on that. This is a way of figuring out how many people do I need to have in the study in order for me to be able to likely find some sort of dif uh, difference between these uh, variables, some sort of relationship between the, these variables, if one exists. If there's something there, how many people do I need to be able to find it, right? So um, that's essentially what power is looking at. The, there's a relationship as well here on the second uh, major bullet point um, uh, looking at effect size and power. So if you want to find a very small difference between two groups, such as the vocabulary difference I just talked about between men and women, you have to have a lot more people because I don't expect there's going to be much, much of a difference. So the means are not very different from one another, but they are different. Right? So 
the, if you're looking for or expecting a small effect size, you need a larger sample. If you're looking for a smaller, uh, a larger effect size, so a big difference between the means, you need a smaller sample. Um, and that is the end of this first video. We'll see what, see you in the next one.